you're there with your team, you're set up, you, you've seen the Olympic Village. Now for the actual competition aspect, what was it like playing in the Olympic Games and actually going out in the field and pitching in Tokyo uh, 2021, the, the COVID Olympics, as people will probably look back on it. What was that like, pitching and being on the field, representing an entire country, Team Israel, and competing against people from all around the world? Yeah, I mean, I think it that, you, you know, building up to it, you knew that there was going to be no fans. Like, you knew that most likely... There would not be any spectators there. Like the adrenaline would have to come from within, just from the stage that you are playing on. Um, I think it really hit me for the first time. Not even like you asked before. Not really entering the village. Um, I wouldn't say that was when it hit me. I would say that the opening ceremonies, and we had like a three-hour buildup. Like you're waiting in the tunnel, waiting for the ceremonies to start. You know everything's happening on TV, and then as you march in, although there was you know maybe a thousand people in the stands at the ceremonies, and it was just staff, um, just like all of like the theatrics of everything and the performances, and like the people kind of go like performing and dancing around you as you walked in and then you like walk through the tunnel and like all the bright lights are on you. That was when it hit me. Um, and you know, walking through the opening ceremonies, like you could see there were TV cameras everywhere, TV cameras floating overhead. And when I was holding my phone up and like kind of videoing the surrounding area while I was like looking around in my hand, like I could feel my phone just vibrating and I was like, all right, people are, this hasn't happened since I've been here. So people are obviously seeing us yeah. walking through or maybe more specifically seeing me on TV. And, um, that was an incredible feeling like that. was, And that's that, the, that's the opening ceremony, right? Yeah. The opening ceremonies. Um, and that felt like walking, that felt like running in from the bullpen to like close out of close ball game time, you know, times so many levels. Um, so that was neat. And then, um, it took a while for that rush to kind of go down. Like we stayed there and watched for like another two plus hours, other countries walking in and it was still like, holy mm -hmm. crap, like everybody in the world can see me right now. And then we had like a nice, like five day build up to our first game. So we were able to practice in Japan and kind of, uh, uh, do like live outings there before, um, before our first game. So for me, the I didn't pitch in the first game, but my first outing was against Team USA. And although it didn't really go the way I had hoped, coming in from that game, you know, I was in the bullpen for most every game. I wasn't really in the dugout, wasn't able to kind of celebrate with everybody mm -hmm. when we would score and whatnot. But when I actually had my first time running in out of the pen and like, you know, there's a camera following you on that, on that little Toyota car we had to take in mm -hmm. there was cameras all like in the little tunnels under around the dugout cameras in the stand like mm -hmm. seeing those like feeling those bright lights and those bright like high level stadium lights on you immediately was immediately it was like this is nothing I have ever done in my life before mm -hmm. and like all eyes are on me and it was just like straight adrenaline and excitement to be out there and again, like I said, although that first outing didn't go the way I had liked, um, once I was completed and like kind of caught my breath in the dugout, it was like this is like this is incredible. Like this is absolutely incredible that I am here right now. And I had definitely had like a little bit of like a reflection moment, like sitting there in the dugout after that outing, and it was like wow, like I officially pitched in an Olympic game. And I think that the the that level came down maybe a little bit in that second outing in terms of like the extra beating of your heart, but it was still that same level of um, intensity that you had going out and taking the field for that. So it was it was amazing, and I mean it led to a lot of like self and personal reflection for me and everything that it took to get to this opportunity and like kind of the, the um, ups and downs of my career and everything to get there. So, yeah, I mean, it was, it was incredible. And then you kind of go back to the village and you see all these athletes who have trained their whole life, life for this opportunity and made you feel, um, uh, made, made me feel like very accomplished, I guess. Yeah. It, it was wild as your friend watching you on my laptop coming out to pitch in the Olympics and you, you came out on that mitt, the baseball glove car. That must have been wild going out into the field. I've never seen anyone be brought out onto 
a sports field using a tool that is used in the game. So you were yeah. using a baseball glove in the game and they brought you out on a glove car. It, it would be like if a basketball player came out onto the court in a mini, ba- in a, like a human sized basketball hamster wheel where they brought like a shoe. all the starters out. Yeah, exactly. Or they were riding in a shoe, uh, something like that. That must have been a wild experience coming out to the field for the first time in that baseball glove car. Yeah. And, and even though there weren't fans there, there's still the cameras and the lights and everything you were talking about. Yeah, it was cool. It was like a historic thing almost because you've never seen that done before. And like, I had like a picture of me in it that went like, that went viral. And like, that was, I, I was lucky that I had a really cool, like really sick image um, captured of me in that moment. Um, personally, I would never want to do that. I love running in from the bullpen. Like I love the rush that you get. I like also feeling like I'm staying loose from bullpen to running out to the mound. And I like that little extra, like, all right, my blood's pumping more. I catch my breath a little bit when I get on the mound, like I'm ready to go. So that was, it was almost like anticlimactic in a way, like having mm-hmm. to then, all right, I'm hot. And then I go yeah. sit in the cart. This thing goes out. And it was funny. Cause I guess it was like completely electric. Cause there was no, you didn't hear the gas. It was just dead silent as you would roll out and the doors would open um, and then like the bright lights were on you. Um, so it was, it was cool to be a part of that, but I would, and the car, the cart was sick. Like I have some funny pictures, like in the cart, um, before the game, like, again, it was a really sick concept, but I would rather run out there and have my adrenaline continue to, to spike. But in this specific, um, uh, uh, circumstance, if you ran out of the bullpen, your time clock would start as soon as you came out of the bullpen. If you took mm-hmm. the car out, your clock would not start until you get out of the car when you're almost on the mound already. So it saves you like, you know, three to six pitches on the mound, depending on how quickly you warm up. So it would not have been a good idea to run in. Yeah, it did, it did seem like it took a long time for the mitt to get from the bullpen to the mound. If, if they made a hypercharged turbo mitt, or maybe you came out on a mitt motorcycle something like that where it would keep the adrenaline from the bullpen into the real game i i think that would add some spice to baseball if instead of just the walkout you'd have something where each player had their own unique thing that they came out with maybe not all the pitchers but the starting pitcher where they they ran out and and they already have their song but it was like they came out in a a Porsche or or Harley Davidson (laughs) or they brought cheerleaders out. Like they had their own cheerleader squad on the sidelines as they're warming up something to add to the fan experience of baseball that other sports already do. Like the UFC where they wear the flags and they walk out and and they have their song and everyone's cheering or, or cheerleaders with the NFL on the sidelines, something like that that doesn't take away from the performance aspect of baseball, but adds to the fan experience. Yeah, I mean, I think the hard thing with baseball is it's such a tradition, traditional sport, and that's why you get so much pushback when there's changes that happen. But at the end of the day, like, the world changes every day, society changes, people change, and, like, you know, change is going to happen to help keep fans engaged. I think I personally would take, a, like, a bird scooter, a lime scooter out to the mound. I think that'd be sick just like have your glove on your head or something like that, or have the glove hanging off the front of the scooter and take the electric scooter out, like pop a little wheelie and toss it to the side and then get going. Exactly. And then, and then you keep it behind you on the mound in case you ever have a ground ball where you have to cover first, you could field it and then hop <laughs> on the scooter and then you just run it. You run across the bag. It's like, well, imagine you on a bird scooter staring down, uh, it's, uh, like Billy Hamilton as he's sprinting to first and you're like eye to eye with him on a bird scooter and you get there just in time and then you do like the whip around with the scooter you flip it and then that's the that's the play yeah I would that would be, be insane I'd be so down I don't think I'm athletic enough to pull that off but I'm down to practice 